Hello, welcome to my channel, Renzo here. Today I'm gonna paint a new portrait with pastels, pastel pencils. Okay, I'm gonna show the materials. No, I'm gonna change my camera, okay? Okay, okay. I'm going to use this set of Carbotello. I'm going to use this Toys on Dior Soft Pastels. And I'm going to use this 24 Soft Pastels, the Faber Castell. Okay. The previous days I've been using just Toys on and Carbotello and adding this one because. I have more colors with this one. Okay. First, I'm gonna start with the soft ones, and the paper is Canson. Canson, me tientes. That's the uh, here. I have the the level. One hundred sixty grams. Hello Sarah, hello Michael. Okay, I'm gonna start sketching with charcoal. I have this big charcoal and let's see the top, the bottom. Uh, she has a lot of hair. Okay, I think I'm gonna place the hairline here and the bottom of the face around here, a little bit up here. Okay, now when you decide this, you know that from here to here you're gonna split the, the face in three portions. change to I'm gonna use white okay to go darker I don't wanna go darker to see more make more visible these marks three portions this is gonna be the hairline the brows the base of the nose and the chin okay hello inter intesar Hussein thank you hello Barbara Okay, now next thing, I'm going to see the center line. It's there. Okay. okay. Now, from here to here, I split in three portions. On top of these lines, I'm going to place one eye and the other eye. Here, the nose in the middle, and from here to here in half, and that's going to be for the mouth. Okay. I use a pencil or a brush to see how tilted is the, the face. Okay, use something because okay I'm moving this. It's gonna be easier. Okay, once I have this, one thing that always we can use is from this point that's gonna be the base of the nose. We can trace a 45 degree angle and usually we're gonna find the corner of the eye here. And that's a good point just to, to draw the eye from here to here. Okay. And between the eyes, usually there is one, the distance of one eye. And another eye here. Obviously this eye is a little bit, a little bit narrower because of the perspective. Another thing that you can do if you establish the center line, which you can trace this line on top of the photograph and use it to, from this line, draw the contour of the face and from this line to the right, 
draw the other side of the face. It's like measuring from the center to the left and see uh, how much distance you have to here. Now you can obviously uh, make a perfect sketch, a perfect drawing, or you can just go sketch. I usually go like that because I'm gonna just paint and draw at the same time. Hello, Savur. Hello, Ingrid. How are you? Hello. Uh, okay, that's that's nice, Barbara. Hello, Kemi. Hello, Savur. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to establish, I'm going to use just two colors. I'm going to establish light and shadow, okay? Uh, as you have seen the video from yesterday, I started using just orange for the light and brown for the shadow, okay? And on top of that, I started to light, light up the color. Now, I have this new set. I can pick up a color that is close to the light and the skin color. Now, I don't want it to get really close, really close to the light, the lightest light on the face. I want something kind of neutral. Okay, this is a color that could be really close. And for the shadow, I just want brown. These sticks are just tiny sticks because you could just see here. This is mini, mini 24 soft pastels. There are links to these uh, materials on the description box, okay? You can find links there, you can buy materials for, for them. Okay, all of these are soft pastels. Soft. The other one is this. Soft. Okay. The only ones that are it's not like I'm gonna say hard, hard, but this is the uh, the pencils. Okay, but definitely are th those are not so soft like the sticks. Uh, the sticks are different. Okay, let's see if this color works. Now, where's my idea is just like I said, establish the light, and on top of this, I'm going to change this color. Now, what I have to calculate, let's say that I'm going to add light on top of this. I'm going to add a little bit of red, pink, maybe a little bit of green. If this color is too light, uh, maybe that's not going to work for me, or uh, if this is too... Okay, I'm going to get something that uh, is going to be able to... Where I'm going to be able to put more... A lighter color on top of that. Okay, let me see this just a minute. I'm just lighting up my camera a little bit. Okay. Now, this is the color that I used yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna just use it here. This was my color for the light yesterday. This is the color for the light today. Let's see. See the eyes are tilted like that, but the mouth is not tilted like that. It's more like this. Okay. I can just keep, let's see, let me see. Uh, yeah. I can make a straight line like this, like 
parallel to the, the eyes and then I can change this like this the base of the mouth and for this obviously I'm following the proportions okay from here to here the same and to the forehead this uh, proportion it can it could change a lot it depends just on the hair okay hello Omar hello herbs is that sanded paper right yeah uh, this, this is Kenson this is the burn Kenson and it says my tint is 150 grams okay I didn't put the link to the paper but I will thank you so much Intesar okay let's see you know what this color is too yellowish eh? I'm going to add another color on top of that. Okay, let's use. I have in my set, I have this one, I have this kind of pinky. This is the, the Faber Castell. kind of an orange it's really a grayish color I'm doing this with my hand because I'm going to just blend everything here okay now first that's gonna be difficult right now to see the real color because we just have one color there is no contrast when we add contrast then we can judge how light or dark is this color okay I'm going to use this brown just to add a little a layer to the hair to the dark here okay and I'm gonna use the same brown to make the shadow here on the eye then the other eye, then the nose. Okay. Try to see the shape of this light in order to copy that. Yeah, I think it's okay. I'm squinting down my eyes and trying to see this shape, okay? Stepping back, okay, I see... I see this and I think that's okay. Now it depends if you like the texture of the paper or not, how much you you, you add of this pastel, okay? But you can see the paper here. If I don't like this, I can add more. You see, to the point that you're not gonna see the tooth of the paper, nothing. It's completely gone. It's up to you, okay? It's up to you.
In my case, you know, I don't like the tooth of the paper. Uh, maybe uh, if I see some area with some tooth, uh, that's gonna be okay. But uh, it's not like uh, like I want to see that. Now I'm checking out my uh, my values, and I don't like the color right now. It's too yellowish. Okay, but that's okay. You know, we can we can add more and more pastel. The good thing about pastel is you can add layers and layers and layers, and that's gonna be okay. Of course, if you have a lot of colors, not nothing stops you just to pick up a color and compare with the color of the skin, like trying to do something like this on the photograph, on top of the photograph. Okay, see a color. Let's see, is is that much? And look for something really close. In my case, I prefer to mix the colors here but there's so many uh, so many factors that I mean why we do one thing or you, or you just do another thing for in my case for example uh, try to match the exact color is I don't know I don't find this like a very uh, I don't know it's, it's just like um, I wouldn't think about anything, it's just like I would be so worried to have the right color. If it was if I don't have the right color. I, I just prefer just to mix here. Okay. No, you don't like the color, you just add another color and you know that this is gonna change <sighs> this. Okay, look at this orange. Lightly, 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 without pressuring. This is my, my, the amazing thing about pastel. Lightly, lightly, without pressuring. Okay, now I'm cleaning my hand. You go again. And you blend. Now you have a different color. It's a little bit more orangey. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Do more oil and acrylic paintings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, I will. I just this week I just wanted to paint with pastels. I mean, from time to time I just want to do that. Eh? Low if. Okay, that's good if. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jonas. Hello, Monique. more shadows here blending here slightly without pressuring too much for example this is a more soft transition and here's the same or a really soft transition
Okay. I want to switch to the pencils. Okay, I have this brown, kind of a reddish brown, and I'm going to draw with this again. Are we checking measurements? Okay. The face is tilted a little bit <clears throat> forward. That's going to affect a little bit these measurements because of the perspective. Uh, but for the beginning, try just to keep this measurement. Then you're going to change. We're going to change that. We can reduce this a little bit. Hello, hello, okay. Is Embry, do you have more pastel videos available on your Patreon account? No, to be honest, I don't have any. No one, not yet. The Patreon account is is uh, is more like uh, for live paint alone lessons. And check out, of course, all the recorded. Lessons, lessons. You can access there and and check out all of the recorded lessons. But it's not like uh, prepared tutorials. It's more than all the recorded live paint alone sessions. I don't have any pastel yet, but eventually uh, I uh, I will. I, I would uh, definitely. I would plan some. Yeah. Pastel sessions right now, it's just about oil paint and acrylics, but it's like more like about oil, oil paint. But we paint with acrylic Saturdays. Back, check it out again. Yeah. Check out the lightning of the eyes, nose, mouth. Yeah. Okay, I'm squinting down my eyes, and I go. I'm gonna change to this pencil, darker one. I'm squinting down my eyes, and let's see. I have like a dark area here, darker here darker here darker here and here mm -hmm. okay I, I established one color the shadow Okay, and now I'm gonna add more lights. Uh, what I was doing right now uh, was about the drawing because you know that I didn't start with a really perfect drawing, and that means that I have to be back and forth between adding color and drawing again. Okay, let's add the lights. Obviously, a highlight is gonna be always on the nose here. And it depends where is the light coming from. It's coming from here. This light is gonna be lighter than this one. Okay. Okay. This thing about knowing what happened with the light is just to because we. It's not, it's not about just trying to copy what we see. We need to understand the light. Yeah? And that's going to help us. Uh, for example, a common mistake is just we add the light here and we add a, 
another really really st uh, stronger light here like this one and when we start to understand how light works we uh, start to add that to what we do that means that if the light is coming from here definitely it's gonna hit here there's gonna be the but my light is light and the light is gonna less it's gonna be less strength as it goes down on the face okay that means that this area is not gonna be the light like this area here okay and knowing these little things it just help us to see more okay it's, it's like it's, we don't see these things we see these things but we need knowledge in order to to help us to, to see more to see to understand these things and just when we are not so sure that we see the light or something like that we add this to, to use we use this knowledge to for this okay It's the same with the proportions. Why I keep checking the proportion of this? Yeah, because it doesn't matter what I see, I'm just following this. This is my, uh, how do you say what? The basis. Yeah? And on top of this, I build up all the portrait. If the, from the very beginning, I'm, I'm gonna try to guess, okay, the eyes are here, the nose a little bit here, the, the, this, and then maybe uh, that's gonna be maybe uh, something that maybe I got, I got lost just trying to guess where are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. When we use a structure, uh, we have a solid foundation to build up on top of that the portrait. Hello, Maji. Happy is asking me. I often see my acrylic more absorbent in the canvas. I see my acrylic more absorbent in the canvas. I'm doing this right now. Because I'm planning to soften this. Okay. Usually, uh, if your canvas is is like that, uh, you need to add an extra layer of gesso. Uh, that's a common problem with the canvases. Unless we buy the maybe the expensive ones. Okay. I still see the face, see the proportions, the overall shape. I can squint down my eyes and compare this with a photograph, and I think it's okay. I'm close. Okay. That's what I want. I mean, getting close. Hello, Maggie. Hello, Ineta. Okay, let's continue. Let me step back. Okay, let's make more details. I'm gonna use black. And again, it's gonna be about drawing. When I draw, I have to see one eye, the other eye. Okay, I'm gonna draw a little bit of one eye. And then the other eye. I'm not gonna stay too much time, okay? Using one eye. Uh, this eye is tilted different because of the hand. Eh? It's kind of stretching the eye.
Okay, step back. Even that I did this little thing, I need to step back a little bit. Squint down my eyes. And check out. Okay, let us continue. I just use in black really lightly. Okay. Really lightly. Okay, I see light here. I'm gonna light up this a little bit. Really lightly, okay. I don't want this to be black. I'm gonna add right on top of this black, but I need a darker color. See the drawing. Okay. Let's see some alignments. For example, I think the corner of the mouth is aligned with the corner of the eye. Uh, anything that you can check out, do it first on the photograph, okay and then on the drawing or vice versa anyways yes. okay let's see I'm trying to see the shape of this area here how close is the mouth to the nose and how affect this distance the, sh the cast shadow here mm -hmm. Change into this more red, reddish color. Okay, I see the mouth here. It's okay, but I mean, I gotta say that I think at the same time that the eyes are not okay. Uh, yeah. Maybe I'm gonna move this eye a little bit up. A little bit up. Okay. You see this line here? Okay. A bit closer. Okay, I have this line. I'm gonna move this line a little bit up. It looks like just one millimeter, but this is a tiny portrait, one millimeter is a lot. Not like a lot, a lot, but I mean, for, for a tiny portrait. Okay. I'm gonna use white. I'm going to draw the lower eyelid. Where I leave there, step back. Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. Okay. Uh, 
Thank you, Margie. Uh, Jonas is telling me that's right. The forehead is shaped like a sphere. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, shaped like a sphere, and the light is in the middle. Happy, yeah, happy is because of the gesso. Oh, uh, okay. I have used both. I don't see a difference between lining and cotton and I mostly I use cotton it's not like I don't want to use lining it's just like a, I, I prepare my own canvases and I used to go to a store to buy my uh, the, the cotton and you know like it's just a, a habit I think this guy doesn't sell lining Linen lining, <laughs> and I'm not planning to change to another store. Yeah, but I have used linen. I mean, obviously, uh, the difference is is more about the the time, how much is gonna last your painting. But that, so many factors depend on how much it's gonna last your painting like the weather how much do you care your painting how much care how much care how much do you take care of your painting and um, like you feel the difference when you paint on top of that no you don't feel the difference it's like you say like uh, my, my my brush is gonna flow just softly on lining and not cotton no if I don't tell you, maybe you wouldn't even know the difference between one and the other. And it doesn't matter which one, if it's not uh, prepared, okay, if it doesn't have enough gesso or, or if it's just oil primed, it doesn't have enough, uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not prepared, okay, and you're going to feel it. You're gonna see, you're gonna see the sticky, that it doesn't flow. Okay, let's go back to pastel. Okay. Yeah, I, mm, comparing again. Yeah, you see, I don't have too much details on the face. But even now, I'm comparing, I'm squinting down my eyes and comparing. When I squint down my eyes, I, what I see is just mostly shapes. When I see the photograph, I see darks. I see so clearly a dark here, dark, dark. And that could be good to compare that. Kind of the distance between this and this and this. Okay, I see alignments. We have to work always the eyes, nose and mouth. Unless you have a, like a really perfect, perfect drawing. You have traced the drawing, and you just so sure that you're not gonna, you not move the drawing. And then you can stay working just one eye, finish up that eye completely, and then move to the other eye. That's a different case. Okay, let's add a little bit of red to the face. I have this, it looks like more like a vermilion color. This is the Carbotello number 305. Okay, let's add some really lightly. Okay, now um, I don't want to just show you this. Let's say that you prefer to use this because here in this. It. You can find, uh, let's say, a color like this. It looks like pink, a light pink. Maybe you want to use it. That's okay. I established with this uh, just my basic color because definitely we have more control with this. But if you try to just fill it up all with this, it's going to take longer. And in order to put more, let's say, put more pigment on the, on the paper, 
it's better to use this okay I have ochre, I have orange let's say I will do this now what I have is this and I have to blend that okay I'm gonna blend it but that means that you need to touch your now when I go with this maybe I'm not gonna blend I'm gonna leave some strokes there but I don't need to blend uh, this blending thing it depends if you want to read a smooth smooth surface maybe but you see a little bit of red without any blending okay now it's up to you how much do you want to touch your drawing every time that you want to touch your drawing you're going to touch your drawing you do this okay remember I mean the oil on the on the hands on the skin is uh, it could damage the paint the, the, the drawing the paint Lightly, lightly, lightly. I'll have a little bit of red. Lightly, okay? Because you're gonna see that it looks like if you press more, it looks like it's just uh, lifting up pastel, lifting up the first layer. Yeah, because this is a little bit harder than the first one. The first one is just like dust, really soft. That's why I go really light. difference now obviously with this you add like uh, not how much pastel but with this you can add a lot just with one stroke a lot of pastel maybe to get to this thickness you're gonna use a, a pencil maybe for I don't know three four layers Now, how reddish is this, the face? I have to go again and again and again and again. Now the mouth. Chick, sorry. A little bit on the chin. If you added too much red, use white on top of that, okay? I'm going to show to the camera the number, in this way 
Maybe you wanna try the same six five five. This color six five five. I use it a lot for the shadows. That give me reddish shadows. Okay, and when I want the more like a neutral shadow, I use this one. This is number six twenty five. Okay, for example, the shadow below the mouth. I don't want this shadow to be reddish, orangey, no. I kind of want my, more like a neutral shadow. And this brown is like that. You see, if I do this, for example, see the difference here. You see? And I have another one. A darker one. And this, this set of 24 colors, you're gonna get just those three browns. Okay, let's continue. I'm gonna be switching between these two, okay? In these two browns. Step back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And add a little bit of this pink from the Fergus tail set. Now I need more contrast. I want to darken the hair. Let's add some black. Okay. I'm going to darken the background a little bit. Okay. Not yet, not yet. Let's continue with this one.
see. a little bit of the eyes. I need more details on those eyes. Mm. Okay. Okay, stepping back. I'm going to sharpen a little bit more on pastel. Highlight. A little bit of yellow here on inside the iris to represent the light on the iris. I think she has green eyes, yeah, I don't know, green. Okay. Thinking, thinking, yeah, I have to darken some areas a little bit more. Okay, this is the brown that I'm using for the hair. Well, 
I'm gonna get a little bit closer to the eye. I'm going to darken this eye. Here too. <clears throat> Hello, where ya? Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, the values are not okay yet. Mm, but I think I got the position of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Ma the mouth is still the different. I can tell that and maybe I'm going to reduce the chain. Yeah, the chain is yeah, yeah, yeah definitely I'm gonna do that. Okay, what about the color? Yeah, I think it's just too bright. I mean the face is uh it's like that, but maybe I'm gonna kill the yellow, okay? I'm gonna use this pink again and I go really lightly on top of this color, okay? Let's see. Mm, okay, I think that's better. Not like I like it a lot, but yeah. Right now I'm thinking about this portion, trying to see if the shape is okay. Definitely I'm gonna, I have to add more hair here and make this corner a little bit darker. And here 
dazu. here in the middle the forehead just really lightly okay now this shadow it just uh, it's like uh, it's too thick I have to push this shadow okay yeah. Now the brows. I think I got the forehead. Mm. No, no, I'm going to darken here a little bit more. No, what uh, basically I'm doing with this uh, pastel pencils when I'm not uh, blending is a cross hatching. Okay. But it's, it's not like a, you can see it really clear the, the cross hatching. But then what I do, okay, I make lines from different angles. And of course I'm trying to keep these lines really close together, like this. And as you can see, okay. Lines like this. And then change. And then change. Party data is telling me the pupil of right eye is off. Okay, I want to check out on that. Yeah, I mean, definitely the eye is not okay. <laughs> you see, this is have more curve here. It's just my eyes, just like. One line, another line. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not okay. So that's that's the process. Eh? Can you see? I don't know if you can see a little bit of yellowish here, here a little bit of yellowish. That was the first color. A little bit. Okay, I'm gonna try to get rid of that. Not like I don't like it, but if I decide just to work in a different temperature, okay, this uh, yellowish color, a little bit of this yellowish color is just going to glow on my face, since my face I'm using a lot of this, and this uh, is like, uh, it doesn't have any strength, it's like a neutral color, a neutral light, soft, soft light. It's a different from uh, when the, we add a yellowish light, which is warmer than this. Okay. Yeah. I gotta see the eyes. I'm gonna correct the eyes. Okay. Now the brow. I think I got this eye kind of. Okay. This eye is just completely off. Okay. Now I have to work on that. Just. I want to just add a little bit of red here. Okay. Now let's see. 
I'm going to work on the sclera here. I'm going to start correcting this eye on the sclera. Really lightly, okay? I don't want to paint the sclera white. I just want to light up this color a little bit. Okay. I think that's better. Uh, okay, for some reason I don't see the highlight. I added a highlight. I'm gonna add the highlight again. I think it was here. Draw the pupil a little bit, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need black. I'm going to zoom in my image a lot. I need to see really, really close. Okay, first, about this eye. I'm going to work on values, okay? I need more, make this darker around the eye. I'm using the number six five five. Okay, I'll use the darker one, and I'm gonna darken this a little bit more. Now the shape of this. I'm gonna use charcoal. This. Okay. Let's see. I'm not pressuring too much. Okay. You know that this area, that the area here that's close to the tear duct, has to be a little bit reddish to represent the transparency of the skin there. But I just need the charcoal because I feel that it could be more precise with charcoal. And sometimes I even work with graphite a little bit. Okay? For the same reason, because obviously I have a. I mean, charcoal is pointy. I'm speaking about, especially about this mechanical pencils. Add a little bit of light. Here, a little bit of light. It's clearer. Okay, a little bit of light up. <laughs> Without the brow, it looks like kind of... 
kind of weird eh? let's add the brow here yeah that's better A minute and I'm gonna sharp I'm gonna sharp a pencil here. I'm gonna read the comments while I turn it in. Is charcoal a substitute for black pastel? No, I think it looks like uh both are the same pretty cool yeah, I just maybe because my pit charcoal is maybe a little bit sharpener than the pastel maybe I just think just because of that I, I don't know I, I maybe just something in my head that made me think that I have more control with the charcoal to make tiny lines Yeah, but for, but for a small small like tiny details, when I used to paint commissions, pastels, portrait commissions, I remember that time, all the time I was using uh, charcoal uh, graphite pencil, because you know that's that's better for details. But it was just at the end because on top of this, that's impossible to add pastel on it. It was just at the end. When I wanted to add the high eyelashes, for example, I have everything ready. Uh, this is really easy to add the high eyelashes with this. Okay? I'm not gonna do it now. I will keep it to the end. Okay, that's better, that's better. Remember soften the brows. Not because the brows are dark, so we're gonna go really black. No, we have to soften them. First, uh, uh, don't paint uh, the brows too dark. And second, don't make those too sharp. Okay, even when the, the brows are really black, black, they are getting some light and that makes the brows don't look completely dark. Okay, you think that Okay, I see that the person has like black hair and you go and you paint black brows. 
it's gonna look like a, uh, it's gonna, it's not gonna look natural. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of red here. I can see a little bit of red on the picture here. The nostril here. Let me see. Okay. Mm, kind of difficult to. Uh, I'm using black. Yeah, I think it's okay. On top of this black, I'm gonna just red. Okay. <clears throat> How do you keep safe your pastel works? I just put uh, some really thin paper on top of them and I keep one on top of the other. Watching you on my TV via YouTube and on my iPad. Yeah. That's good. You can see the pastel dust. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now, um, for the mouth, I was thinking, okay, I don't think I'm going to darken this shadow on the nose too much, like on the photograph. And the same for the mouth, okay? I'm going to try to keep the mouth. I'm going to make this dark. But this is, if you see it really close, it looks like a really dark, dark brown, almost black. Okay, I'm not gonna get to that dark. I think uh, to add some softness to his, her face, I don't need those darks, okay? Uh, here in the eyes, that's, that's okay, but here in the, the nose and the mouth, I don't think that's gonna help me to, to get that soft look on, on her face yeah. that represent her age yeah? okay I remember when I started to paint commissions I don't remember the first one. I tried. I was trying to remember really hard what was my first commission, but uh, I remember some some of them, and uh, maybe obvi obviously the difficult ones. I just I need to think a little bit here. Okay, I want to work on this clear in this eye. And at that time, I remember there was a famous, kind of famous here locally, a pastel portrait painter. He was really good. He was really, really good. And I was trying to mimic him. 
copy his style. I couldn't, I couldn't, okay, it's like so difficult, but the only thing I remember f for uh, his portraits is like he did, he didn't just to paint the, the mouth, the mouth it was something really transparent, so, so transparent, it, but it was amazing, it was like, you don't need to see more, it was uh, something soft, a lot of contrast on the eyes, and and he used to add some kind of brush, kind of strokes with Bastera, some green, a little bit of blue, but really subtle. Really subtle, but you can see that the stroke right there. I remember that uh, uh, event, I was so lucky that somebody just uh, asked me to paint a copy of this and just gave me an original painting pastel portrait was amazing I, I, I had that one original for a couple of weeks I was checking out I took a lot of photograph uh, I didn't have a camera at that time I went to buy a camera because it was so important for me to get get as much information as possible and uh, I was just trying to like uh, see something and try to memorize visually I was watching the, 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 the portrait daily checking out why, why I mean but you know that is you don't get we get a lot but it's not enough I mean when you don't know what's happening on the the, the head of this painter how is the logic about these greens blues the softness uh, it's kind of difficult to to follow him. It's kind of difficult to replicate exactly that. And I didn't know at the time that eh? I, I thought it was it was enough for me just to copy that what I see on the surface. That helped me a lot. That helped me a lot. But with time I, uh, I started to understand that we need more. Anyway, it was amazing. I don't remember his name right now, and I don't know that like uh, that I'm speaking about. He was really famous here about what four years ago, and without internet, without all of that, he, he just got lost. Mm -hmm. Some people got uh, has had. It has some portraits, but the seat is just like I don't know, a forgotten master here. And the good thing, apart, apart, uh, for, apart from that, is that. For his work, that's he. Uh, it was like uh, his own style. To just keep transparent mouth, especially the mouth. It's just the, the thing that I remember a lot because it was just like uh, I remember this perfectly. For example, for example, instead of adding, uh, uh, I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, instead of adding a line there, the line that he added was kind of a light blue. That's too dark. In the middle. I remember they say, why, 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 why? I mean, he has his own logic. He had something like a light blue. The light, for a light from the mouth. And that makes the, the mouth transparent. Yeah, because there's no dark first. And it was a, kind of a nice combination. For uh, the red around the mouth. And at the same time, of course, I, he didn't leave the color alone. I mean, when I was watching and analyzing his portrait, you can see a little bit of that blue around here. But obviously, in the area where it's no red. Yeah. Okay. For example, 
things. For example, here I, I have to add red. light and I remember perfectly that it was uh, maybe my blue here in the middle is just to uh, I, I don't know this guy with time uh, with all his experience and doing the same again and again uh, he developed a sense for the color for his own colors, his own harmony. And maybe what I thought it was a light blue, it was just gray, black and white. Yeah. And we think, okay, we think we, that the color that we see is just the color. And we always remember that the colors don't live alone. They, uh, when you see a color that looks like this is light blue, and uh, you have, if you've been following my channel, you, you know that sometimes in, when I paint with oils, I add just black and white. It looks like kind of really bluish on the skin because obviously the skin is kind of orangey. Yeah, but you see things like that. You think that you're watching a color. Uh, and that time for me, I didn't thought about that. I was trying just to focus in just one space and for me was I gotta get this color I wasn't thinking oh, okay all the colors around that color okay that came later on my my formation as a painter I was trying to understand that I mean colors don't live alone that this I mean matching a color is no it's not about trying to to paint perfectly and mix that particular color perfectly okay and and so many times uh, we have to deal with mixing a color like we think that is perfect. Okay, as soon as we don't change anything more, it's gonna look perfect. As soon as we change maybe the background a little bit, that change the color that we have in front of eyes, of eyes that change something that happened there. We don't know what, we don't, we don't know why. Okay, for me it was like, oh my god, I just the only thing I did it was I changed the background. I changed the background and make a dark background. And now my painting, my portrait looks really light. The color is, is lighter than it was. It's contrast, I, uh, you know, that's things that we learn with time. Making mistakes, none of that. Now that I remember him, I'm going to try to... I'm going to move the mouth a little bit up, I think. Well. And I'm going, as soon as I finish this, I'm going to look for this guy. And copy his, his style. <laughs> I need a really soft brush. Only 
careful. Oh, another thing I remember about now, using this brush, I remember uh, this, uh, his paintings of this guy was with uh, some glass. The glass wasn't touching the painting. And I remember I take out the painting from the glass and I touch it. And a little bit on the corner. It was just like touching this. I get my finger like this. And that means that he didn't use any fixative. And that, that painting was just there for what 20 years without any fixative hey, you know I have heard so many times that uh, pastel just keeps the same color for years more than oil paint oil paint is different I mean pastel is so fragile I mean you know to see I mean you can but without any fixative without anything just like that uh, you see this painting after 200 years that's going to be the same color Wha uh, which is different with oil paint with oil paints because of chemicals because of all of that okay because uh, linseed oil uh, I change with oxidation with time to change the color uh, the pigments you know that those are Sometimes our combination between minerals and that change the color with time. Okay, this is like uh, usually synthetic. Synthetic? No, no, no. What's the other word? Is for pigments. It's not like uh, you're gonna find a, the right color in nature. It's just a combination between minerals and with something that accelerate the, the process of oxidation and that creates uh, a pigment, a color which is a result of an alteration of the process of oxidation okay Okay. Uh, did I say I didn't hear the dog? <laughs> uh, okay, that's good, Ingrid. Ingrid, a glass of wine. Eh? Hello, Michael White. Thank you. Thank you, Ing Ingrid, for upgrading to the fifteen dollars tier. Hello, Paki Molina. Hello, Nicola. Thank you. Okay, let's continue with this. Okay, I think I have this right. I mean, speaking about uh, how soft I'm gonna the mouth. I have to. I mean, I forget them a little bit the mouth okay I was moving the mouth up that's why you see that kind of dirty line there okay
Okay. I think I'm going close with uh, the mouth. No, okay, no, no, no. It's still the different. Wow. That's the problem when we don't step back and when, when we get caught up with the tears and we want to stay there, just there, there, there. See, I have to move it more like this. Even more. light I think this eye is better but it's not perfect yet uh, something is not okay that there, there something is not okay here and I remember I went to the museum here and I couldn't find any poster portrait like it was like this painter We have a really nice, amazing oil paintings in a museum here, which I leave kind of close to the museum, like walking, I could get there in 20 minutes, which is pretty, pretty close. Yeah. If I go by car, I could get there in 20 minutes <laughs> because of the, of the traffic. at the highlight on the tip of the nose. Okay. Highlight on the mouth. This doesn't look okay.
comments. Do you like the gas posters? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's a pastel painter that I don't even remember his name. I'm gonna check out this amazing paintings. I think he's from well, he's from Europe. I don't remember his name. Oh, I think it's Fantine La Latour, Fantine Latour, let me look for Google, Fantine Latour, Fantine Latour. Exactly, uh, Fantine Latour, Henry Fantine Latour. I think that's the name. Okay, yeah, I'm not so sure. Sorry, okay, let's continue working. I'm gonna reduce the chain a little bit. I need black. Yeah, I think uh, this is to here, this is closer. I, I need to move this a little bit up. I'm gonna make this darker. Okay, I'm gonna add some red here. Black here, pure black, dark, dark. Okay, on the hand. Hello, David. Hello, Michael. When you finished, when how do you remove the pastel dust left on the work? I, to be honest, I don't do anything. I just keep. I don't even. Uh, I don't do anything. No, nothing. Just 
just take the, the, the drawing and put a piece of paper and just save it here mm. I mean I suppose you can blow uh, but mm, I don't do anything I, I see a little bit of dust you see uh, the dust eh? can you see the dust I'm going to it's pretty clear when I just make a close up like You see the dust? I don't do anything, I just leave it there. Mm -hmm. Jean Baptiste Simon Chardin, maybe. I think it's Fantine Latour. That name came to my mind. It was an amazing portrait. Uh, Jean Baptiste Simon de Chardin, I think. Yeah, yeah, I'm checking out right now. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I think, I, I don't know which one is pastel or oil paint, but. Yeah, definitely. Amazing work. Yeah. Now, uh, Nikki suggested me yesterday uh, a fixative. You know, because I had, I don't used to use a fixative like never. And now speaking about that, I I uh, I added a little bit of fixative. Like uh, I was a couple of days ago to one of the drawings, and that knocked down the lights. All my lights just died. Okay, and it's gonna take me just to light up again. The, uh, basically, the highlights, eh? and it's not it's, it's not gonna be just add the highlights because if definitely if I add just the highlights, it's it's just like all the lights are just has changed a little bit, and. I'm gonna try the fixative that Nikki suggested me yesterday on the live stream because in other way and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna try it again because that's gonna be just throwing my work away like it's like just working again everything since you change a value that's gonna affect everything especially the lights yeah it's not gonna be just adding touches of highlight is going to be about working all the lights again and I prefer just to keep my drawing just like that just let's say dark uh, sorry they say just like, like this really fragile but without it doing anything more until I try this fixative this new fixative that I got suggested okay okay let me see I'm gonna add a little bit of green to the hand
This is the second time I paint this image. The first was in the Patreon account. We painted this with oil. I just I love this uh, the the light and all of that. Darken the mouth a little bit, the lower lip. Shadow here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Red. Some ultramarine blue, some dark, dark blue. Let's see this one. That's the beauty about pastels, yeah. See those intense colors. That's why, uh, I mean, the expensive brand, that's pretty sure, like, pastel is it's just like 99% pigment. That's why it's so strong. Uh, where is the skin color? Okay, okay no, just this. Imagine that uh, it's just uh, well, uh, pigment and some wax, 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 and then to just to keep it's just compressed, just a little bit. But you make this, you make it dust, 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 and you mix this with linseed oil. You have oil paints. Trying to make some strokes and leave those strokes, strokes like that. close to the edge okay I don't want this to pollute my skin color
Two yellowish. Yeah? Ah, that's okay. I think that's okay. But I don't want to spend time trying to match this color. Okay, I want to just gray down a little bit the background. And at the same time to use the, uh, that to soften the edge. Uh, this is gray, just gray. Uh, speaking about softening the edges of the hair. Okay. Maybe I'm going to try to make a sharp edge here a little bit. Okay, and a lost edge here. And a sharp edge here. Okay. Definitely here I think I'm gonna just lost this. Okay. A sharp edge here close to the face I think is going to work. I think a dark gray. Oh, here I have a dark gray. Almost black. light this dark okay okay let me see let me see let me see let me think why not darken everything there is no reason for me to darken this but I just don't want to see this now because I want to step back and just try to judge the color of the face Good. Now I gotta, I gotta work here. I need more shadow in this area. Okay, and more red. And here more skin color. This is so, so gray, grayish. And a little bit of orange. What kind of Canson? This is Canson. Uh, my or me? I don't know how to read it. Tantis or Tiantis? One hundred fifty grams. Sixty grams. Also check out Gian 
18 leotard. Okay, I will. Thank you so much. Nicola Tricky, the master, I want to show you one of my drawings on Facebook. I would like you to see it. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Uh, hello, Mohammed. Got a paper. Yeah, I said, I said it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Monique, for answering. Okay. Uh, Pastel mat. I'm gonna try that one. Yeah. I'm scrolling it up to see more questions. Okay. Uh, okay. Dita is telling something here. I have to sort. One is I not used yet. They say the freezes your drawing. Okay. Hello, Karen. Okay, I gotta go. Oh my God. I gotta go. I have to take my son to the swimming pool. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> Oh my god, I, I was planning to spend maybe 30 more minutes. The precious is waiting for me right now. Okay, 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 yes, I gotta go fast. So sorry. I wanted to put a little bit more on the drawing, but I was thinking I just wanna try to do something really fast. Right here. I'm not gonna promise that I'm gonna make, I'm gonna continue the second part because you know what? I'm a lazy painter and I see the painting and I say, okay, I will do it. No, at the end I don't do it. I need to darken here because the forehead is kind of flat. I darken a little bit, little bit, little bit to make it more rounded. I don't have more time. Just some touches, some touches. Like more light here. And the last thing that I wanted to show you is how I use uh, the graphite to make some details. Like for example on the eyes. Here just for eyelashes I do this. And this. Okay, but just at the at the end, okay, because this is not possible to paint on top of this again. It just it's, you're gonna feel it. You try to go on top of this, you're gonna feel that the pastel is not it's not it's not gonna stick because this is yeah. tiny details. And sometimes I use this tiny 0 0.5 millimeters to make even tiny tiny things. Okay. I used to do that. I used to paint commissions, still commissions. Not anymore. Okay, so sorry. I would have loved to put more on this portrait, but you know, you know, life has to go on. <laughs> and for my son, his swimming lessons are really, really important. Nothing more important for him than his swimming lessons. And for me, that's pretty good because in this way, I'm keeping him a little bit away from the computer and from the games. I prefer to have, the, have him in the water swimming. Okay, see you, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, take care, everybody, and see you next time. See you Monday, maybe.
Bye, take care everybody. See you next time. I'm gonna put my, my face here to say bye, okay? Really quick. Okay. Okay. Bye everybody, take care. And see you one day.